Hello, my name is Sarah Fee, and I'm the lead curator for the ROM original exhibition, Cloth That Changed the World, India's Painted and Printed Cottons, which is on view now at the Royal Ontario Museum. It celebrates 100 years of India's unique mastery of painting and printing using natural dyes on cotton. So on display, we have a great variety of designs, lots of luscious flowers and playful animals, but actually one of my favorite pieces is a contemporary masterwork by the textile printer, Abdul Jabbar Mohammed Khatri, and I will call him Jabber for short. Jabber works in the village of Damadka in Kutch Gujarat, which is a dry desert area. His master printing is covered with intricate geometrical designs. Jabber calls this particular composition honeycomb, and I think you can see why. It is made up of these interconnected star shapes and hexagons, each that's filled with intricate motifs, such as small floral heads and other little geometric shapes. These stars and hexagons are outlined with striped lines that weave in and out of the pattern and cross over and under each other. You can see several shades of red, blue, as well as black and white. Surrounding the piece on all four sides are wide borders filled with yet other designs, these two outlined with narrow lines. Now, scholars have called these mesmerizing kinds of combinations mind traps, like Persian carpets, they draw your eyes in, trying to figure out where each shape ends and another begins, and you can be lost for many minutes trying to figure this out. Now, Jabba works in the printing tradition known as Ajrak. Ajrak is the specialty of Kutch Gujarat, and it's also the specialty of the Khatri families who have been doing this work for over 500 years. They used carved wooden blocks to create their designs. They print substances onto the cloth, such as iron and sugar and gum pastes, and then soak it in a series of dye plant baths. In between the cloth is washed and air dried. Now, Ajak is distinctive for its deep reds and blues and its abstract flower and geometric shapes. And also for the fact that it is printed identically on both sides and in India it is unique for this. Now, Jabber told me that his father taught him to print on both sides by piercing his early textiles with a needle and then looking to see if in fact the colors and the pattern were identical on the two sides of the cloth. Jabber's father was the famous Mohammed Sidi Khatri, who revived natural dye plants in the 1970s. Now, most printing families in Kutch by that time had given up natural dyes for chemical dyes, which are cheap and faster to print, but they're also toxic and overly bright. Whereas plant dyes may be very tricky and time consuming, but they do create these soothing, subtle and permanent colors. Jabber specializes in exploring the geometries of Islamic design. He told me that he was first uh, inspired to do this in the 1990s when he made his first Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca, where he saw uh, an amazing variety, he told me, of Islamic art. So he returned to India wanting to experiment with this design on his Ajrak textiles. But to do this, he had to invent his own tools, such as extra large compasses, and he also had to commission extra tiny printing blocks in order to create the fine details of his piece. For his honeycomb masterwork, Jabra used over 48 blocks, and it took him almost two months to build up the color and pattern between the printing and the various dye baths. He pays homage to traditional Ajrak, in the floral infills and also by retaining the four large borders that run along the edges. I also love this piece because it speaks to innovation in the face of climate change. The Khatri families today face shrinking water supplies. It takes a lot of water to make Ajrak between the washing and the dyeing. And Kutch, as I've mentioned, is an arid land. The rivers ran dry in the 1990s. So today, the Khatri families use instead well water, rainwater, sand filters to remove the harmful iron content, washing tanks, and other means to continue their family craft. 